Hello. Over the years, I've been contacted by many clients and colleagues with concerns and questions about anesthesia-free tooth cleaning in dogs. I'll refer to this as AFTC. It is and always has been my stance that AFTC is unjustifiable in that it provides no benefit to the pet and can cause harm in many ways. In this video, I'll explain the reasonings behind that assessment and I'll also discuss the current state of the law in Ontario following a court decision at the Superior Court of Justice in Ontario in May of 2017. I view this video as a public service announcement. I want pet owners to have valid and credible information about oral care in pets so that they can make an informed decision about the type of care that they're going to seek and who is going to be providing that care. In doing your due diligence, I want you to always consider the source of the information, the credibility that that source might have. For my part, I've been a veterinarian licensed to practice in Ontario since 1984. I've been doing nothing but dental and oral surgery since 1991. I became board certified as a veterinary dental specialist in 1997. I've authored many articles in the peer reviewed literature as well as several book chapters. And I've uh, lectured on veterinary dentistry at veterinary conferences around the globe. I've won several awards for my service to and my educational efforts in veterinary dentistry. There are several other credible sources of information, including the American Veterinary Dental College's website, avdc.org, and of course my own website, toothvet.ca, has many papers of interest to veterinarians and pet owners on the old CUSP articles page, and I'll be referring to that later. I also have some um, demonstrational videos of me performing procedures. Those are a little bit uh, graphic and content, and so viewer discretion might be advised. The logic behind AFTC goes that periodontal disease, which is certainly very common in pet dogs, is caused by dirty teeth and therefore cleaning the teeth would be a way of addressing this. And the providers of AFTC claim to be able to do this without the use of chemical restraint and suggest that that is advantageous in that it avoids the risk of anesthesia. This highly simplistic view misses some important truths about periodontal disease and oral health. At best, AFTC would be able to remove some of the deposits, plaque and calculus, from the portions of the crowns of the teeth that are visible and accessible in a conscious dog. As someone who spent nearly 30 years working in the mouths of dogs and cats, I can tell you how challenging it is to reach all surfaces of the crowns of the teeth, even with the use of general anesthetic. However, even if it were possible for AFTC to thoroughly clean the crowns of the teeth, periodontal disease is not caused by the deposits on the crowns of the teeth. Periodontal disease is caused by deposits below the gum line. Periodontal disease is a hidden disease. And AFTC is not going to be able to reach below the gum line where the more significant deposits reside. I'd like you to go to my website to toothvet.ca, navigate to the Old Cusp Articles page, and under the heading of Periodontal Disease, you'll find a link to a paper called Periodontal Disease is Hidden. And I'd like you to have a look at that paper to get a sense of what I'm talking about, to understand the hidden nature of periodontal disease. Uh, briefly, in this photograph we see here, the lower first molar of this dog looks perfectly clean. This is how the tooth appeared when the dog arrived for treatment. There's no visible deposits on the crowns of the tooth. There's no inflammation or recession of the gum tissue. There's nothing visually on the crown of the tooth to suggest that there's any disease. But then, when we look at the radiograph of the tooth, we find that around the back root, the root to the, uh, to the left of the screen, uh, there's no bone left around the root of that tooth. So this tooth that above the surface looked perfectly fine and dandy has severe, chronic, and end-stage periodontal disease and required extraction. And I see this sort of thing all the time. Teeth whose crowns look wonderful, and on conscious examination or on even first visual inspection with the animal under anesthetic, I would anticipate the tooth would need nothing but a cleaning. And on deeper inspection, 
we find serious pathology below the gum line. So while AFTC can remove some deposits from those portions of the crown of the teeth visible and accessible in a conscious patient, it cannot address the true cause of periodontal disease, which are the deposits below the gum line. So in that regard, AFTC is akin to putting a fresh coat of paint on rotten window frames. Things may look better for a time and from a distance, but the rot is still present and progressing, hidden from view. As well as periodontal disease, dogs may suffer from a number of other dental and oral diseases, such as endodontic disease, which is disease of the pulp tissue inside of the teeth, tooth resorption, unerupted teeth giving rise to cyst formation, malocclusions with abnormal tooth to tooth and tooth to soft tissue contact, and more. Again, at the Old Cusp articles page of my website, there are papers discussing many of these issues, and I certainly welcome you to uh, read those at your leisure. So what's needed to really address uh, a dog's oral health is a comprehensive oral health assessment and treatment that we abbreviate to the term COHAT. And on the Old Cusp Articles page under periodontal disease, just below the article on periodontal disease is hidden, a few papers down from that is one entitled COHAT Defined. And it describes the multitude of steps involved in doing a proper professional dental assessment and treatment for a dog. And this includes under general anesthetic with proper maintenance and uh, monitoring and um, an endotracheal tube placed to protect the airways so no debris can get into the airways, a thorough tooth by tooth inspection, probing and examining above and far more importantly below the gum line, as well as intraoral dental radiographs of all of the teeth and an inspection of the entire oral cavity um, to the far back behind the very last tooth and down into the throat. And then with all those findings uh, thoroughly recorded and uh, in a detailed dental chart, the findings are discussed with the owner to come up with a, an appropriate treatment plan. And then the plan can be carried out uh, after obtaining informed owner consent uh, regarding all of the problems and the treatments that are going to be provided. And uh, that treatment would certainly include a thorough oral hygiene procedure which involves cleaning all of the tooth surfaces above and far more importantly below the gum line and around and between each and every tooth. And these are things that just cannot be done uh, without the use of general anesthetic. Another important component of a cohat is uh, post-operative discussion with the owner regarding uh, daily home plaque control and the long-term maintenance plans to maintain good oral health uh, in, throughout the lifetime of the animal. And this also requires knowledge and understanding of the path of pathogenesis of periodontal disease and other dental concerns, and an understanding of all the products and the strategies that are available uh, to aid or as tools in the maintenance of good oral health. So my concerns about AFTC include the fact that while they procedure may clean the crowns of the teeth, it can't clean where periodontal disease resides, which is below the gum line. It does nothing to assess or address the other oral pathologies that may occur in the dog's mouth. It doesn't provide protection to the airways, so debris liberated during the cleaning, whether it's chunks of tartar or the polishing paste, uh, may be aspirated, drawn down into the airways to cause an aspiration pneumonia. There's risk of causing physical damage to the teeth and the soft tissues around them, by placing sharp instruments into the mouth of a dog that's conscious and may move unpredictably. And it can provide the owner with a false sense of security that their animal's oral health concerns have been addressed, and this may lead them to avoid or decline professional veterinary dental care so the disease persists untreated while the animal continues to suffer in silence. In Ontario, veterinarians are a self-regulated profession. We practice under the Veterinarians Act, and our regulatory body is the College of Veterinarians of Ontario, or the CVO. And this is the same as the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the Law Society of Upper Canada for lawyers. One of the mandates of the CVO is to ensure that licensed veterinarians are practicing at least to the published minimum practice standards. Another of their mandates is to ensure that members of the public are not practicing veterinary medicine without a license. 
So the mandate of the College of Veterinarians of Ontario is to protect the public interest and to police and guard against violations of the Veterinarians Act. The laws in Ontario around AFTC have changed over the years. There was a time uh, during which it was considered illegal for a layperson to offer AFTC. Um, in a court case in May of 2017, the CBO brought charges against a provider of AFTC, um, charges of practicing veterinary medicine without a license and um, holding out as a veterinary professional. Um, I have posted the court document on my website. If you go to the home page, that looks like this, and then scroll down to the bottom and click on the link that I've circled in blue here, uh, that will open up a 16 page PDF of the court document on which I've added my own comments in red text and with yellow highlighting um, to add my thoughts and observations on the ruling. Now it's 16 pages, it makes interesting reading, and I encourage you to read it all, but I'm gonna to cut to the chase um, with regard to the, the conclusions and the findings in this case. Now this document I've just mentioned is a matter of public record and it's available to anybody who chooses to seek it out. I've put the website and case number uh, at the top of the uh, my copy of the PDF so that you can find the unaltered version if you choose to. Um, but right now I'm going to uh, read directly from the ruling. Uh, I'll paraphrase it a bit. I'm going to keep it gender neutral and I'm going to avoid using the name of the of the respondent, uh, even though it is a matter of public record and clearly published in the in the document. So this is uh, paragraph 28 and it uh, addresses the question of whether or not the respondent was guilty of practicing veterinary medicine without a license. And it reads as follows. Based on the facts of this case, I conclude that the canine teeth cleaning services provided by the respondent did not constitute the practice of veterinary dentistry. All right, now this next step or part is, is key to this. Veterinarians do not clean a dog's teeth without general anesthesia. To do so would be unacceptable as part of veterinary medicine. Obviously, that does not prove anything about the practice of the respondents since she is not a veterinarian. Likewise, the fact that the respondent did not properly diagnose or treat dental disease in a way a veterinarian would have done is consistent with their non-professional status. Since the cleaning and descaling of the dog's teeth was cosmetic only, it cannot be said to have imparted a health benefit that might otherwise be within a veterinarian's purview. The services provided by the respondent did not fit within the reasonable definition of dentistry or veterinary medicine they provided a service which is clearly not provided by veterinarians. And my comment to that paragraph reads, since the respondent's business does not constitute the practice of veterinary dentistry, it is not technically illegal under the Veterinarians Act. However, what they do would be considered malpractice if done by a veterinarian because it provides no medical benefit and can cause harm. So while it's not technically illegal, what the providers of AFTC do would be considered malpractice if done by a veterinarian. With regard to the charge of holding out as a veterinary practitioner, the judge did find the respondent guilty of that. And I'm gonna read uh, part of his ruling, again, avoiding the use of the respondent's name um, and keeping it gender neutral. Although that, again, it's part of the public record. So this is paragraph 38 of the 16 page PDF. Significant space on the respondent's website is devoted to a description of periodontal disease, including photographs. Since by their own admission, the respondent has no training or ability to recognize, diagnose, or treat periodontal disease in dogs, I consider those aspects of the website to be misleading. A reasonable person could consider that a form of veterinary services are being provided even if only by the recognition of periodontal disease and advice as to its treatment. Their advertising on the website implies a greater expertise than they actually possess and positions them as capable of providing services and advice that could be understood as being the equivalent of some aspects of veterinary practice. Compounding the problem of what I consider to be false advertising, the respondent failed to strongly recommend veterinary treatment for the dog 
brought to them for teeth cleaning during the college's investigation. This was despite the fact that the cleaning dislodged two of the dog's teeth and that they, by all accounts, uh, and, the, and that by all accounts, he, the dog, had severe oral problems. So that's a quote from the judge's ruling in this case. I'm now going to read the final two paragraphs from the ruling, because as I've said, um, this ruling found that it's not technically illegal for people to provide AFTC. There are now uh, this, this, these guidelines um, by which providers of AFTC must conduct their business, um, restrictions, things from which they are prohibited. Um, and so here we go. Paragraph 41, therefore, there will be an order that the respondent personally and the respondent carrying on her business is prohibited and enjoined from holding out by statement, advertisement, sign, website, or any other media directly or implicitly that they are qualified, able, or willing to diagnose, prescribe for, prevent, or treat any canine oral health disease, condition, or injury or to examine or advise as to the physical condition of any dog. So anyone providing AFTC is forbidden from doing any of those things. And then in paragraph 42, further, it will be ordered that the respondent personally and the respondent's business be prohibited from holding out that they are involved in canine dentistry and that they must forthwith amend their website and any advertising material to delete any reference, either expressed or implied, to cosmetic cleaning services being an alternative to veterinary oral care for dogs, to their possession of any professional qualification as to oral care for dogs, to their ability to advise on dogs' oral care or oral health, uh, to a regular program of oral hygiene for dogs administered by them or by any oral hygienist or veterinarian, uh, to any healthcare benefits to be provided derived from cosmetic teeth cleaning, and any description or photographs of periodontal disease in dogs. So that's the result of the ruling. It's not technically illegal for a layperson to offer AFTC, but any person engaged in such business cannot in any way imply that they have any knowledge of canine oral health or disease or any expertise in diagnosing it, managing it, treating it, or are able to offer any recommendations regards oral health or that anything that they do is in any way an alternative to proper veterinary care. And um, anybody doing any of those such things would be in violation of the Veterinarians Act. They can in no way imply that there is any benefit whatever to the services that they're offering. So to repeat the premise I started off with, uh, AFTC is unjustifiable in that it provides no benefit to the pet and it can do harm. Now, I have no jurisdiction or authority over veterinarians or lay people to change their behavior in any way. That authority resides with the College of Veterinarians of Ontario, the CVO. So if you have any concerns about somebody engaged in the uh, provision of AFTC, and you feel that they may be in violation of this ruling and the Veterinarians Act, the correct step would be to contact the College of Veterinarians of Ontario. Um, their website is cvo.org, and you should report specifically to Mr. Martin Fisher. Once again, AFTC provides no benefit to your pet, and it can do harm. Thank you very much for your attention.